Uh, there will be multiple uh, videos to describe proteins and enzymes, uh, but these are the objectives, uh, these are the understandings we need to have as students in order to do well on the segment of proteins and enzymes. So to start uh, describing proteins, we are going to talk about amino acids, uh, the building blocks of proteins. And in your data booklet, uh, there will be a section 20, that you, it's titled two amino acids and you have 20 of them 10 of these amino acids are essential your our body cannot make it and we need to get proteins from food and each amino acid has three letter abbreviations uh, so that's how it's going to be spelled why is it called amino acid because it has a carboxylic group on one side and then it has amine uh, on the other side so this is the basic side of it and this is the acidic now why is it two amino acids uh, because the carboxylic and the amine are connected to the same carbon so that's why it's known as two carbon number two or alpha amino acids so alpha amino acids or two amino acids because the carboxylic group and the amine group is attached to the same carbon. Now all amino acids except the first one alanine are um, optical isomers because they have a chiral carbons from your organic chemistry. They have four different attachments, hydrogen being different from this segment and uh, they are solids at room temperature and they have high melting point this is because of the fact they are usually sweeter iron in solid and aqueous form and i'm going to talk about it uh, briefly now for every amino acid there is also an iso electronic point this describes the ph at which uh, the amino acid is neutral it's sweeter iron now if you notice the more uh, amine groups you have your isoelectronic point is more basic, the pH is much higher than 7, and also the more carboxylic group you have, the more acidic you are, and your isoelectronic is way below 7. Now to elaborate on zwitter ion, I'll go to the next slide. Uh, so when you look at one molecule, let's just look at alanine for example, uh, or any molecule, R is a radical, it could be CH3, it could be this humongous side chain, it could be any of those. And then on one side you have uh, amine, and the other side you have carboxylic group. So this is a, this is a molecule or molecular form. Now in ionic form what happens is this hydrogen is going to protonate the nitrogen, this is the acid donating a proton, this is the base, Bronsted base accepting. So as a Zwitter ion, it will be NH3, uh, CH with a positive charge, and COO with a minus charge. This is known as Zwitter ion, and it's a hybrid. Uh, from German words with so it's a hybrid of the two it has positive and negative now what happens if you uh, put this in a strong base so if you take this and you put it in OH minus strong base what happens the hydrogen of the amine is going to protonate this OH minus and it will be H2N, the charge goes away, the positive charge, and you will be just left with the negative charge. And this is anionic form, because you are an anion. And that's, uh, that becomes handy because soon we are going to elaborate on, on isoelectronics. So if you are uh, in a pH above your isoelectronic, you are in a base, you are going to be negatively charged. Now what happens if we put you in a strong acid? So if we put you in strong acid represented by H+, the H+, is going to donate itself to COO-, minus, 
and in this case we are going to be a cation or cationic form. So it means if uh, the amino acids it's put in a solution that its pH is lower than isoelectronic, its own isoelectronic, it's going to be positively charged. So isoelectronic are important. As Zwitter ion, you are amphoprotic or amphoteric. That means you have dual nature to behave as a base or an acid. And then when we change the pH of your solution, you either become negatively charged or positively charged. And we need to appreciate that and talk about that. So the next slide will be synthesis of proteins.